Hey guys, Omni here. We are back for episode five of Doom Patrol. Last week's episode was just another knock out of the park for the show. Uh, just, I love how this show balances some really touching, endearing, and emotional moments with this ridiculous, these ridiculous concepts like the sex men and this sex demon who was going to give birth to this baby that was just going to end all future conceptions and dive the world into this hellscape of just sexual lust. What the hell? <laughs> but like you, you balance that out with stuff like Dorothy uh, contemplating her position, her relationship with Danny the street while everybody is actually collecting together to help rebuild Danny. And what, how Dan, just that relationship that they had between Niles, Danny and her uh, and how she was really being just locked away. Danny was not just only her friend, but also in a way her prison, which is something that Candlemaker was able to point out to her, almost even convincing her to put an end to Danny the Street altogether. Um, towards the end of it, too, we got a lot of reverse psychology since she did turn away from it, coming from Candlemaker, which we, th I think myself now being convinced by a lot of the people down in the comments that that's probably the case. And he's going to be pushing her into this despair until she has nothing else left but to lean on his abilities and make that wish. Um, and then you had stuff like Cliff and Larry reflecting on their uh, ability to be, you know, effective parents. The things they left behind, their failures as parents. Um, and just the way they communicated that, the way they talked about that, uh, it was just really touching. And, you know, again, Larry's got some of the most painful and depth filled layered uh storytelling with his character uh cliff i think we're finally starting to get somewhere uh with that character i think we're finally starting to get into some of the roots of his anger some of the roots of his frustrations a little more than just the rough marriage and you know tangled webs of uh lust that he was you know spreading around in his uh pre-robot days um I don't know. I feel like we're going to start peel, peeling back more of those uh, layers for Cliff because I feel like at this point, um, he's the only one lagging behind as far as a lot of the development that's been going on and likely so. So I'm really excited to see where we go from here, where we dive into in the next crazy adventure with the team. So let's go ahead and dive into episode five, Finger Patrol. Here we go. Sweet and be like, oh, hmm. sure, okay. And then ditch your ass. Okay. So what happened? Oh, shit. Or not. What the fuck? Ah. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Cliff, let a man rest. You seen a videotape? It was in my room. No. What was on it? The chief confessing to all the horrific shit he's put me through. <laughs> what the no. f uh, just That's still some lingering sex here. ghosts, okay? Did either of you come across a tape? <laughs> Baby don't. Go liar, I'm a liar. But you're right. I'm bad. She is so good at just switching between these personalities. I hate you. Oh, my poor poor. Everything hurts. Baby doll. Aw. A friend. This is Dorothy. I love your pigtails. I like yours. I love Dorothy. I'm the writer and Aww. the director for the Cloverton Community Play. <laughs> She's trying to get out there again. Yesterday. Trust me, this will be more than worth it. Right here? Okay. Let's go. Let's go. I'm here. I'm grown up. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Again. Price check on That's me, hun. <sighs> <laughs> I think we're good. Oh, is he gonna see the new designs? The fuck? Oh, what the fuck? Spider Cliff. 
brain fingers. What the hell is all this? Possible upgrades. Is this just a trick? Trying to buy some time off from me hating you, and can you really pull this off? Because false hope is the last thing I need, Chief. To see this to fruition will take years. Oh, decades, maybe. Damn it. Have decades? What are you up to? Are you ordering food? Is he thinking That's of calling his family? I just made a date to see my son, Paul. Sounds promising. <laughs> oh, he drooled about himself. <laughs> Sounds unnerving. <laughs> oh, you Nice. Vexation, dear one. Stop it. Yeah, he's playing a game here. He's got his long, long plan going. Long plan, no, long I'm... game. Just a friend. Can I meet them? Please, please, please. You have to be polite. I'm always polite. I told you to be polite. I was. Dorothy! She like swat at him or try to grab his snoot? What? I didn't pick up quite all that well on what exactly happened there. Is he spying on her? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. She thinks he could rebuild my sense of touch. Congratulations, man. Yeah, he also said it could take decades. Uh, Nas always finds a way. You know who else always finds a way and isn't dying? Your dad. Would Silas help him? <laughs> Fuck. I certainly hope everyone's being polite and good to the new friends we've made. I'd be very disappointed if someone decided to be a sour little girl. Yeah. What Niles did to you, manslaughter at best. He's a criminal. If I help him do anything to you, that would make me an accessory. I cannot do that. Oh. <laughs> Fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know if this was the best idea. No, it's good that you're here. Good for you and Paul to say what you want to say, yell what you want to yell. Hey, nobody said anything about yelling. Air your dirty laundry. Express your love. Get to know one another. Real catharsis. Get him! Get him! Oh, no. Go! <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you, Larry. Are we patrolling? No. Mm -hmm. Because I've been thinking about this. We both know I got a lot of anger in me. What if the best way for me to manage it is to blow a hot load of rage all over some bad guys? <laughs> you. What? Don't judge. <laughs> Steel and stone. I'm Cliff Steel. You're Vic Stone. That's not a bad one. That's not a bad so team you, name. No. There's this woman. No, I, just, I can't stop thinking about her. Patch up job. What's the plan? Spy on her, stalk her, and Sandwich we'll figure it out from there. Smooth. Has a sandpaper strap on. <laughs> hey, man, what's up? You're gonna go in there and knock on her door. And then you will say, I'm stupid, I fucked up. What that's it? It's verbal astroglide. <laughs> Steal <stone> forever. <laughs> verbal astroglide. <laughs> Great description. I'm stupid. I fucked up and I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what am I watching? <laughs> Dude. Cliff dreaming. 
Steel and stone. <laughs> Fuck yeah. A mortal art production. Steel and stone. Getting it done. Uh oh. Also, my lover. <laughs> I'm gay. Thank you for telling me. Mom never mentioned it. I guess it's my turn to be honest. Ooh, uh. I had no idea I was carrying so much of it. The anger. The hatred. What the fuck? No! Captain Trainer! I'm sending you back where you belong. I'm not going anywhere. Negative spirit, release. Fuck yeah! What the hell is that? Toby, get in the house. Oh my god, Paul. You're a curse on this family. Larry, we have to go. Those people shot him! Oh. Fuck! Why can't Larry have anything? Your dad is a bad man. What? He hurt is she gonna tell her the truth about him? him. Oh, bed, fuck. Oh, what the? Baby, don't. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> you. Oh, wait, what? What the fuck? Oh, fuck. What did he? What was it? Is Candlemaker in the underground? He's coming. Don't let him get me. Sue, ba baby doll, you fucked up. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh my god I mean you fucked up you fucked up you fucked up uh, you know, I <laughs> baby doll wasn't like an adult. She didn't have <sighs> these like high functioning thoughts. She was just a kid that overreacts. But what was that bit about her flame awning? Because that seemed like maybe it wasn't just baby doll steering. And I'm not sure what that was about. Did Baby All ever have actual powers? I don't remember if she did at any point. But we got the flame on. We got some psionic abilities there. Uh, and then, I don't know. It seems like some shady stuff was going on from the underground crew. And I'm not sure if that was intentional or if it was just Baby Doll losing control and her jealousy and her uh, need to play. But... She pushed the wrong buttons after last episode. Things, Dorothy's definitely 
struggling with her identity, her trust in everybody, especially since her uh, relationship with Danny was tested last episode. Now being confronted with these slanderous words to, to her in her own mind of her father's uh, personality, his integrity, his uh, just everything being put into question, it just and his morality even. And she's like, not having it. On top of that, Baby Doll even hurt Manny initially when like Dorothy was like, all right, I trust you. Behave, be polite. I'll, I'll introduce you to my friends. And then she's just like, boop. Being a little, be a little shit bag, like some kids are. But, uh, then she tried to incinerate her. She, she was going to kill Dorothy. So I can't really, like, I don't know, <laughs> justify, uh, what, what, I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. My God, uh, <laughs> I, I can't defend Baby Doll's actions at that point. She got the consequences of those actions. She was warned. And we got that. Cliff and his little adventure was fantastic. I like that. The little sequence with him and uh, Vic doing that 80s cop, uh, buddy cop crime show kind of thing. That was awesome. And I like that little... Um, back and forth they had before Vic went in to talk to Ronnie about, you know, them starting up uh, fighting crime, him like maybe doing that to kind of, um, you know, steer himself in that kind of direction, kind of like a Batman-esque kind of thing. It was like, I've got all this rage. Maybe if I fight crime, I can release some of that. Kind of like what he was doing with the rats. And I think we're starting to see a lot of the gang uh, start to branch out Jane not so much like into the what can eventually become this superhero team that the Doom Patrol is uh, but I think we're starting to actually see it develop Tr Larry and his relationship with the negative spirit is a lot stronger than it was in season one and he's utilizing it it's guiding him he's communicating uh, Rita has been honing her powers with the intent of using them for the greater good. And I like that whole little development too with her like uh, dealing with her courage and finally putting herself out there and doing an audition, trying to get into something. Even if it's just like a small local play, it's a step. It's a baby step into getting some semblance of her life back and overcoming a lot of her um, strife and personal issues, the block that her mother pretty much instilled on her. And then you just... the. <sighs> The stuff with Larry, man, just that, just that turn, that heel turn that Paul took on him, calling the Bureau, bringing them in to just take him away. He brought that on himself. I mean, Larry and just defended himself and they were the ones shooting at him and shooting at the spirit. And they're the ones that blindly shot his son. So that's, that's on him, uh, in my opinion. And Rita went out of her way to, again, show how much her abilities are kind of evolving and her control over it by, you know, using them to shield the grandson. Um, well, great-grandson for Larry. It, it, we're just starting to see them develop more in that direction. Of course, since the beginning, Vic has already been the seasoned superhero. He's been the one really trying to push for them to grow as a team, become a unit, and do something with their abilities, their handicaps, their struggles, the things that make them who they are right now, and maybe put something, get some good use out of it for the greater good. And I think we're getting the baby steps of that this season. But man, Candlemaker is terrifying. You know, we... Uh... So yeah, they definitely was baiting that. They were like, all right, you keep living your childish life. See how it goes. See how it goes along. How uh, everybody starts to treat you and whatnot. So we'll see how it all goes and how you do this on your own. And then is right when it was needed, when her life was on the line, make a wish. 
and wish she did. I want to know how that's going to affect the underground, how that's going to affect the Jane, how is that going to affect, you know, the team dynamic? How is that going to affect the Chief? I really want to see the fallout from this episode. I want to see what happens next so bad, but it's a week away. Ah, this was a solid episode. It was really a, it was a really quiet, contemplative episode for such a long portion of it. And I like that. We were like getting, you know, we've had some crazy stuff the past couple episodes. It was just really a lot of bonkers stuff. And this one was really a little bit of a breather and allowed us to kind of rest a little bit and kind of get in the heads of a lot of the characters and, you know, take a break and think about some things like where they want to go, what they want to do, how they want to reconcile with everything going on right now, how what's been happening before. And then we have that ending with baby girl, baby doll, sorry, being the just kind of unwitting antagonist of the episode. And Jane warned them. Uh, even Hammerhead warned Jane. Like, they both had a different point about, you know, before. She was like, Baby Doll can't handle this. And then Jane was like, all right, we'll 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 put Baby Doll up there. We'll just have fun, see if she can make some friends. Don't be lonely. And Hammerhead's like, if you know how kids are, sometimes they fight, sometimes they get petty. And she did. So they both had their points, but Hammerhead came out on top at the end of this one with Baby Doll losing control, lashing out. and. This is, this is, she reaps what she sows, man. She reaps what she sows. Ah, what did you guys think of this episode? I want to know your thoughts. Well, we'll touch base next week and with the next episode. So let's carry on the conversation after the video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care, everybody.